So, welcome to Scroogenomics, the title of a book by Joel Wolfogel, who also wrote the seminal paper, The Deadweight Loss of Christmas. And he estimates that Christmas, in aggregate, is a huge loss to society. Why? Because of the colossal quantities of unwanted gifts. Um, if we just run through the basic economics, in economics, you have this concept of a dead weight lost. That means uh, resources that are wasted. How does Christmas do that? So if you have a giver of a Christmas gift and a receiver, a recipient, say the uh, giver buys a grey cashmere jumper worth, say, £100. So it costs £100 a shop to buy. Okay. However, the recipient might value that less. How much would they pay for that gift? And according to research done at Yale University as part of the seminal paper, um, students valued their gifts between 10% and 33% less, depending upon who was giving the gifts. So if I really wanted a cotton jumper, it was red, you know, I wouldn't value a grey cashmere sweater as much as I'm, I should because a lot of gifts are actually thrown away. Um, so <clears throat> who is the most efficient? And the most efficient givers are usually the givers that have the most information. So they tend to know the recipient better, obviously. Close friends, partners, parents. Often age difference is a factor, so the bigger the age difference, the greater the inefficiency. And of course the worst givers are um, distant relatives, often, and they come down to about 33%. So in the United States, 40 billion is spent on Christmas. That means that an optimistic scenario, an optimistic scenario, we're losing 4 billion every year annually, and that's just Christmas doesn't include birthdays, doesn't include weddings. Um, so <clears throat> we've, we've got this dead weight loss, which is between 10 and 33%. Um, and then, furthermore, of course, we have what economists call negative externalities. That's external costs um, that aren't included in the price of the gift. So if we look at the environmental costs of Christmas, they're gigantic. Um, you've got wrapping paper, um, in Britain alone, that's 227,000 miles. It'll go around the world nine times. Um, about 79% is recycled in Britain, which is pretty good. You've got one billion cards, one billion cards. That's a lot of paper. Food wastage, an example would be 130 million sprouts are wasted. That would power a home for three years. Um, trees, um, the average two meter tree if used for wood chips or burnt on a bonfire, uh, uses about three and a half kilograms of carbon. Worse still, if it goes to landfill, the uh, Carbon Trust recommends 16 kilograms of carbon. So Christmas is an extraordinary time, I hear you say, because retailers make 25% of their sales between Thanksgiving and Christmas and 60% of profits in the United States. So there's a huge increase in consumption, of course, and therefore a huge increase in uh, economic loss through the deadweight loss and through environmental costs. So <clears throat> what is the solution? Well, the solution, according to a number of economists, is to give cash, because there's certainly no deadweight loss with cash. Um, or a close alternative is vouchers, and there's been a big increase in voucher giving. However, the problem is not all vouchers are actually spent. In fact, I have a hundred pound worth of Amazon vouchers that um, I just can't find. Um, furthermore, we could stop gift giving. We could be really like Scrooge and just stop gift giving and reduce all these costs and spend uh, or our resources, use our resources more efficiently. However, maybe with a little common sense and seeing things slightly differently to economists, you might argue um, 
that, number one, the best present is one in which the recipient doesn't realise they want it. And when they get it, they think, oh, wow, this is great. This is what I wanted all along. Um, so it almost has a value greater than the actual value that the present was bought for. Economists call this consumer surplus. When you get something cheaper than you'd actually prepare to pay for it. Um, number two, it might build up skills. Why do parents give books instead of computer games? Well, maybe they're hoping that their child becomes a literary genius or learns to have a lifelong appreciation of literature. I was given a book of Chaucer poems when I was eight by my aunt in London. I think she assumed I was a little more advanced than I was. Um, and maybe I don't have a lifelong love of Chaucer yet. So build up skills could be another thing. Guilt free. So you could receive gifts you wouldn't ordinarily buy yourself. Chocolate being a good example if people are trying to be good. Um, number four, this is the key argument. The sentimental value of Christmas. The um, demonstration of love, appreciation, affection. And indeed the present giver has a huge positive um, benefit in terms of giving a present and the sentimental value also is a positive for the person who receives the present. So economists have failed really to put this into their calculations. Uh, and fifthly, of course, it builds relationship, it builds social capital. So um, now you know the economics of Christmas, it's for you to decide. Happy Christmas.